we have the newest version of iOS versus the newest version of Android. How do they compare? Let's take a look. Welcome everyone to Retethered. We have iOS 14 and Android 11 here in their beta versions. They're not officially released yet, but I thought it would be interesting to take a look at the most recent updates for both operating systems and see how they compare. Because honestly, they have never been more similar than they are now. We have Android 11 on the right running on a Pixel 4 XL and we have iOS 14 running on an iPhone XS Max. iOS 14 announced a lot of new features that are very similar to what Android has been offering for years now. So let's compare those new features to how Android does it and let's see which is better. So let's start off with the app drawer or in iOS, the app library. So for Android, it's easy. We're used to the app drawer, right? All you do is you swipe up and that takes you to the app drawer and all your applications are there in alphabetical order. You can scroll up and scroll down and you can easily find an application by clicking the top and you can search for one. So let's search for YouTube, for example. And there you go. You have YouTube right there. For iOS, it's not as easy to get to the app drawer or the app library as in Android. You don't just swipe up to get to the app library in iOS 14. You have to scroll all the way to the right. And there you go. Now you're in the app library. And the app library is a little different than the app drawer in Android. First of all, the app library is a lot more useful in my opinion than the app drawer because it kind of categorizes all the applications. So for example, I can go to where it says utilities and it has my most recent utilities there in the large icon. But if I want to get to all of them, I just click the smaller icons and it brings up all the utility applications. Really easy to use. With Android, you don't have that automatically categorized. So it's not as intuitive as maybe iOS 14 app library is. You can also search for an application up top and it also brings all the applications in alphabetical order. So you can scroll through all your applications or you can also search for an application. So let's find YouTube. There you go. So real easy. The only part that I don't like is having to swipe all the way to the right to get to it. Android is a lot easier. You just swipe up. That's it. Now let's get into another feature that was announced with iOS 14 and let's see how it compares to Android, which is widgets. And to get to the widgets, it's actually the same way as in Android. So on Android, you would just hold down anywhere on the screen and that would bring up a menu and then you go ahead and click widgets and that brings up all the widgets and you can go ahead and scroll through all the widgets there. So let's go ahead and add a widget. Let's add something from Google Keep or the Keep Notes. So let's go ahead and add this note to one of my screens and I'm going to go ahead and just put this. I'm going to try to move this all the way over to an empty screen. So we'll just do it like that and we'll put that and there you go we have our widget in place already. In iOS, it's the same way to get to the widgets. You hold down anywhere on the screen and that brings up the jiggle mode. Yes, that's what Apple calls this mode when all the applications are jiggling. It's called jiggle mode. So now in order to get to the widgets, you hit that little plus all the way on top and now it brings up all the widgets and you can scroll through all the widgets as well. And there's not a lot of widgets as of yet. Uh, obviously, Apple just opened up this feature to all the developers. So I'm sure as time goes on, third party developers will start making widgets for their applications. But as of right now, it's only Apple applications as I can see. So let's go ahead and add a note widget to an empty screen as well. I'll take this one. And let's go ahead and move this all the way to the right and we'll put it right there. And there you go. There is the widgets. Now, for me, I prefer the widgets on Android and this is why. For one thing, I can hold down the widget and resize it on Android. 
For iOS 14, you can't do that. You're stuck with that size that they give you. That's it. Also, for Android, I can scroll through my notes on the actual widget. I don't have to go into the application to see a note. For iOS 14, you can't do that. You can't scroll. You can see a few of your most recent notes, but that's it. And then obviously if you click a note, you can go right into it. So on Android and for example on iOS. All right, now let's see how we can remove a widget. For Android, we're just gonna hold it down and move it over here to the remove and that's it. Pretty easy. For iOS, we would go and hold it down, bring up jiggle mode, or you can also hold it down and bring up that menu and click remove widget. There you go, pretty easy. So an interesting feature for iOS 14 was not having to have all your applications on your home screens. Uh, for example, if you wanna get rid of a page here, let's say I, want, I don't want any of those applications to show up, I just want these two pages, that's it. I can hold down anywhere on the screen. I can hit this button right here where it shows where I'm at on the pages. And then I can deselect a page. So I'm gonna go ahead and deselect this one. All right, hit done. And now I'll get out of jiggle mode. And now when I swipe all the way to the right, I have all my applications from my app library there. And the interesting thing is now whenever I download an application, it's not going to automatically put it on uh, one of the pages. Instead, it's only going to be available on App Library. I can search for it on App Library and I can bring it into one of my main pages if I want to, which is really nice. And now let's try out the picture in picture because that was another interesting feature that was announced on iOS 14. Let's go to Netflix and let's test that out. All right, same thing with iOS 14. We're gonna go over to Netflix. And now let's go ahead and play one of my favorite shows. And we'll go ahead and now minimize this. Let's go back to the home screen. And let's see how picture in picture works. If I could do that, there we go. And there you go. You have, pic you have the small little uh, window there on Android that's still continuing to play. And the Android is, and the, uh, I'm sorry, the audio is continuing to play as well so we have it there on both ios 14 and android 11. the difference is ios 14 has a few features built into the picture in picture for example on android that's the only size i get i can move it around and i could do whatever i want but that's the only size i get for that window i can click it and it makes it bigger but as soon as i start doing something else it goes back to that smaller size with iOS 14, I can make this display or this small window as big as I want. See, I just pinch to zoom and that makes the screen bigger. And I can also move it around anywhere I want. iOS 14 also allows me to just swipe it to the left or to the right. And the audio is still playing. So I can use the full display and do whatever I want. And when I'm ready, I can just click it right back. There you go. And it brings that smaller display back to where I was. Really easy to use, really convenient. If you wanna just for a second use that full display and you could just swipe it to the right, no issues. In my opinion, the widgets are still better on Android than in iOS, but that may change. The app drawer, I do like the app drawer a little better on iOS 14, but I hate that it's all the way to the right. I wish it was easier like swiping up. And I obviously prefer the picture in picture in iOS 14. It's a lot more useful. It has a lot more useful features than Android 11 does. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to do a quick look of these two operating systems, iOS 14, Android 11, since a lot of the main features are found now on both operating systems, how each one compares. Hopefully you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos just like this one on tech news, reviews, and opinions, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching.